This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Good evening, I'm Kimilia, and you're watching Kidney News. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad argued that promoting a multiracial Malaysia contradicts the federal constitution, which he said emphasizes the Malayness of the nation. In his latest social media posting, he asserted that his stance aligns with the constitution's tenets, defending his views against critics, including his former protege, Said Sadiq, and Bukit Gelugor, Abno Information Chief, Huzaidi Hussein. Focusing on DAP, Mahathir alleged that it is using its political influence to pressure current Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, warning that Anwar's government would collapse without DAP's support. He claimed that DAP's agenda includes making Malaysia multiracial, replacing Islam as the official religion with secularism, and risking the country's membership in the Organization of Islamic Conference. Mahathir's comments follow recent claims that non-Malays are trying to change Malaysia's identity with outside influences purportedly undermining the Malays' status as the nation's founders and builders. Once titans of Malaysia's political landscape, Azmin Ali and former Prime Minister Mahathir convened for a Hari Raya Aidil Adha gathering, exchanging tales of past glories, national unity calls, and perhaps plotting to regain relevance in the forthcoming state-level electoral saga. Selangor PN Chief Azmin met with former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad yesterday to discuss the current state of affairs. The meeting which coincided with Hari Raya Aidil Adha, also included Azmin's wife, Shamsidar Taharin. During their discussion, as relayed by Azmin on his Instagram page, Mahathir shared experiences from his recent working visits to the UK, Turkey, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Mahathir also addressed domestic political developments, urging Malays to unite against adversaries with ulterior motives. Azmin further highlighted the upcoming birthdays of Mahathir and his wife, Siti Hasma Muhammad Ali, who will turn 98 and 97 respectively. He extended well wishes for their continued health. Between 2018 and 2020, Azmin served under Mahathir as the Economic Affairs Minister. However, in February 2020, he played a pivotal role in the Shretton move, which led to Mahathir's resignation as Prime Minister and cleared the way for Bursatu President Muhyiddin Yassin's appointment to the position. Currently, Mahathir heads the Malay Proclamation Movement, which has received support from Muhyiddin and past President Abdul Hadi Awang. He has also publicly endorsed the Perikatan National for the forthcoming six state elections. An ex-MACC top gun has fired a salvo at a minister, calling for his arrest for allegedly obstructing public duties and labeling his intervention as a potential liability for Anwar's government. A former top anti-corruption official, Bahri Muhammad Zin, stated that Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Tiong King Singh, should face arrest for obstructing a public servant's duties. Bahri, an ex-director of the MACC Special Operations Division, argued that Tiong should have reported suspected graft within the Immigration Department to the MACC rather than taking the law into his own hands. Speaking about a recent episode where Tiong intervened in an immigration case at Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Bahri said if he had been the immigration officer, he would have warned the minister against interfering with his duties. He added that if the minister continued to do so, he would have arrested the minister for obstruction. In the incident, Tiong claimed a Chinese tourist initially denied entry was in fact a corruption victim. After Tiong's involvement, the tourist was allowed in. Bahri urged Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to scrutinize Tiong's actions. He said Anwar should question Tiong about the alleged procedural violations and his failure to engage MACC before intervening. Bahri said Anwar should also inquire if Tiong considered the negative implications for the government before acting.
Terming Tiong's actions as those of a brainless minister, Bahri contended that such behavior constituted a liability for the government and called for decisive action from the Prime Minister. Bahri added that people need to be assured that the Prime Minister can perform his duties without fear or favor. Despite some dissent, Minister Tiong King Sing's decision garnered some unexpected support from DAP. The party's secretary in Sarawak, Alan Ling, applauded the minister's surprise KLIA spot check, urging more unplanned field visits from officials to truly understand on-ground realities and uphold professionalism. Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture Tiong King Singh has earned unexpected commendation from a Sarawak DAP leader for his KLIA spot check. Sarawak DAP Secretary Alan Ling stated that Tiong had no personal agenda when he proactively investigated a complaint from a Chinese tourist. Ling urged government officials to frequently visit field operations without prior notice to comprehend the actual circumstances. According to the Borneo Post, he discouraged orchestrated visits, labeling them as purposeless formalities. Last week, Tiong visited the immigration department at KLIA upon receiving a complaint from a Chinese national who was denied entry. Tiong confirmed that the tourists' paperwork was valid and implied that corruption was a factor, which he intended to expose. Following Tiong's intervention, the Chinese national was eventually admitted into the country. Meanwhile, Ling called for immigration staff to maintain professionalism when interacting with foreign visitors. In an unexpected twist of social media etiquette, Zaki Yamani, who sparked outrage by publicly wishing for the death of past President Abdul Hadi Awang, has now issued an apology. However, was his apology sincere? You be the judge. A social media user who publicly wished for the death of past President Abdul Hadi Awang has issued an apology for his remarks. This follows a request from Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim that the netizen, Zaki Yamani, apologize. Zaki, responding to Anwar's and his friends' feedback, extended his apology via Twitter. He wrote, quote, I apologize to the wives and families of Abdul Hadi if my comments have caused any distress. When another social media user characterized his apology as pastile for its conditional phrasing, Zaki responded with amusement. Earlier, Zaki had tweeted a prayer for Hadi's demise when the latter's health was reported to be failing and he was receiving hospital treatment. This led Anwar to call for an immediate apology from Zaki, expressing his opposition to and regret for the inappropriate post. Fortunately, Hadi's health condition has since stabilized, and he was reportedly discharged from the hospital yesterday afternoon. A recent article by news portal Malaysia Now claimed that Zaki is an assistant to Anwar's political secretary, Shamsul Iskandar Akin. Shamsul has called for a retraction of the article, dismissing the alleged link between him and Zaki as baseless. A renowned political scientist has offered a fresh perspective on Muda's decision to stand alone in the forthcoming state elections. While some see this is a risky move, Wang Chin Huat suggested it might be a strategic game changer. Political scientist Wang Chin Huat has argued that Muda's decision to go solo in the upcoming state election could be mutually beneficial for both the party and Anwar Ibrahim's Madani government, provided it's executed with restraint and careful planning. Wang asserted that existing seat negotiation rules among Malaysian parties make accommodation of Muda in Harapan unlikely. Due to incumbent parties retaining their seats and the limited open seats available for negotiation, Harapan may find it more rational to ignore Muda's demand for seats. Wong also dismissed concerns over Muda potentially taking the suicidal step of going solo. He argued that the wait-and-see approach suggested by many might not yield a better result for Muda in the next general election. Instead, a solo move could pave the way for reconciliation if Muda wins seats, as witnessed in the Harapan and Warisan scenario. 
Wong offered three solutions to prevent clashes between coalition allies, which might otherwise lead to easy victories for rivals like Perikatan National. He proposed tweaking the electoral system to allow direct voting for parties and holding inter-ally primaries or friendly matches to decide on the best candidates for constituencies. In conclusion, Wong said inter-ally contestation with the absence of toxic attacks could become the new norm, leading to a more dynamic and complex political landscape in Malaysia. In a bid to protect minors from potential nicotine addiction, three NGOs are challenging the health minister's decision to delist nicotine as a controlled substance. Three health and children's rights NGOs have taken legal action against Health Minister Dr. Zaliha Mustafa's decision to delist nicotine as a controlled substance under the Poisons Act 1952. The Malaysian Council for Tobacco Control, Malaysian Green Lung Association and Voice of the Children filed their judicial review application last Friday at the Kuala Lumpur High Court. The health ministry had removed nicotine from the list of controlled substances on March 31st, intending to introduce a new bill to regulate smoking products, including nicotine-based e-cigarettes and vapes. However, this move sparked concerns with Malaysian Medical Association President Dr. Muruga Raj Rajaturai, fearing it could lead to unrestricted public sales of nicotine-containing vapes, including to minors. The legal action, which targets the health minister and the federal government, aims to nullify the decision to amend the Poisons Act. The NGOs argued that the minister failed to adequately consult with the Poisons Board, which unanimously voted against the nicotine exemption. They claimed the exemption permits the unregulated sale of nicotine-containing e-cigarettes and vapes to anyone, including those under 18. This, they argue, is particularly concerning given the known risks of these products and their potential to lead to nicotine addiction, especially in children. The groups further highlight that, due to the lack of legislation or regulation, any level of nicotine content is currently permissible in these products. Malaysia Kini is attempting to reach out to the Attorney General's chambers over the matter. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to miliciakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.